Hi, I'm back here at another video at CES 2018. We're here at the NVIDIA booth with, uh, what was your Tim, name again? Tim Wong with Tim NVIDIA. Wong. Uh, we're here talking about the self-driving cars that they're showing off. So could you talk to us a little bit more about sure. that? The first thing we want to show is this uh, self-driving race car behind us. Um, it is a very powerful car. As you can see, there's no place for a driver. So this is uh, essentially the only way to run this car is to have, write some software, have it learn how to drive on a racetrack, and let it go. 320 kilometers per hour, which is what, about 220, 240? Um, so, um, but the vision for it is actually really interesting where they are talking about, because I've got no driver to put it in harm's way, let's do an intersection at 200 miles an hour. Let's do head-to-head -head driving. Um, you can do crazy things because they're autonomous vehicles. So they haven't had their first race yet, um, but it's supposed to be this year. I'm looking forward to it. All the cars are exactly the same. Um, right now it has two Drive PX2 computers inside. Um, this summer we'll switch it out to be Drive Pegasus, which is that big supercomputer, uh, 320 trillion operations per second. That's now going to be in each one of these cars. The only difference in each car, there, there are 20 teams, is essentially the software you write for it. So it's a software algorithm race. Um, could you talk a little bit more about those uh, computers you mentioned and what kind of technologies in those? Sure. So we have we announced um, Nvidia Xavier, which is our uh, it's our new chip. It is it, we got the chips back in December. We brought them up. We actually Jensen was able to show them actually working on boards uh, at the keynote earlier this week. Um, it is three, 30 trillion operations per second. Um, our last gen product was a four chip board. There were two. Parker SOCs and two uh, discrete GPUs, more like 1060s. Um, that had 24 trillion operations per second. Now we have a single chip that does 30. The other big uh, difference from PX2 to Xavier is that PX2 was 300 watts. Um, Xavier is 30 watts. So I now have more power, 24 to 30 trillion operations per second, but I go down in power from 300 watts to 30 watts. Um, and then the, the next one is, and that's mi mo mostly targeted for maybe level three, level uh, two and a half driving. Um, you're just doing kind of basic uh, driving in a geofenced area. Um, for robo taxis, where now you are going to be level five, you're driving autonomous all the time, all conditions. It's a much more complicated problem. We have our Drive Pegasus board. So Drive Pegasus is two Xaviers and two next gen GPUs. So think high end GPUs. Um, that is. 320 trillion operations per second. Now, last year we announced the DGX1, which was a Pascal-based supercomputer for, the, for um, an enterprise, and that was 300 trillion operations per second. We basically now took the power of that computer and put it in something about the size of a license plate that goes into your car. So now you get a supercomputer in your car to run level five. Um, but that's what we feel is needed for autonomous driving. You know, you're doing. It, we provide an open, uh, an open platform that basically has a pipeline from sensor processing, sensor correlation, sensor fusion, localization, path planning, um, object detection, pedestrian detection, animal detection, lane detection, uh, drivable area detection, um, you know, uh, mimicking uh, driving behaviors. Um, and you know, we give this all to customers as a essentially development platform and then they build on top of it. So speaking of some of these sensors, um, what kind of sensors do you put in the car? And do you think between the last gen chips and this gen chips, do you need less or more to get the same results? So it really is up to our customers. We're sensor agnostic where we see whether it's ultrasonic sensors, radar sensors, LIDAR sensors, cameras. Uh, we've had people use FIR cameras, high-res radar. There, there's just a plethora of sensors out there. Um, we have um, a lot of different buses on the on the Drive PX, uh, on the NVIDIA Drive Xavier platform, Pegasus platform, PX2. So I've got 10 gigabit Ethernet, I've got gigabit Ethernet, I've got Broadreach, I've got Flexray, I've got CAN bus, I've got LIN bus, I've got USB, I've got PCIe. Um, so in the end, uh, the customers kind of decide what sensors they want, and what's uh, amusing is each company we're finding, and I have 320 companies I support, are very religious about their sensor uh, choice and type and um, and 
the customer's always right, so I guess I have 320 people who are right about completely different things. Um, so, is one better than another? You know, I've, I've heard discussions that LiDAR, you know, is a must-have. Um, we know companies who are doing uh, just cameras and radars. We know other companies who are doing LiDARs and radars. It, it, it's, it's a wild west out there. But the good news is we all support them all. Um, as far as uh, processing power, uh, the reason you go from DrivePX2 to now Xavier and then to Pegasus is people want more. And so rather than putting several PX2s in the trunk, now I can put you know, a couple of Xavier's or maybe I put one Pegasus in the trunk and that you know, having a supercomputer in the trunk should be enough, but who knows? Uh, I find computing is like a gas law. It expands to find the, re the, the resources available. So I'm sure someone will max it out and figure out, you know, can I overclock it? Can I do something with it? Can I have a couple of them? It's gonna happen. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the future of this kind of technology in self-driving cars? So I'm, I'm waiting for it because I have a 45-mile commute in heavy traffic every day. It takes me sometimes two hours to get to work, two hours to get home. I am the first customer for my own product. I don't need to be driving. I can teach my 12-year-old daughter how to drive in traffic. Follow the car in front, stay in the lane, do that for the next two hours. Um, so in the end, I think it's a better thing. My mom, only she's 82 and she only drives during the daytime when it's not raining. So she's essentially homebound if it's raining or it's at nighttime. So an autonomous car opens doors up for her. She can now, she's mobile. She can, so I think the goodness that comes from autonomous cars is huge. Um, and then traffic, we, we, I just saw an accident. It was out right here um, on Las Vegas Boulevard where there was an accident off the side and, and people, of course, are slowing down to watch it, right? Well, we're in a cab, we're going by the accident, the person on the other side of us wasn't, was looking at the accident, not looking at the car, and rear-ended the car in front. And I'm like, seriously? So, but this is why we need autonomous cars. There have been many studies. Humans suck at paying attention. You know, uh, and, and whether it's phones, whether it's media, whether it's, you know, arguing with someone in the back seat, we need autonomous cars. It, it, we need to have, it, the environment needs to be safe out there and I think autonomous car is going to get us there. Okay. Uh, what about a lot of the safety concerns involved with autonomous cars and how does NVIDIA technology help to kind of dispel those? So that's something really interesting that we're showing this show is simulation. Um, right now a lot of people are testing cars with physical cars on the road but you're limited by time, the amount of time you, and the amount of miles you can drive. What we're able to do is create a simulation environment where I can test and validate and come up with reproducible test cases. So if I want to test that, you know, maybe a little kid, five years old, crossing the road, I can have that scenario go over and over again and see exactly what happens ra rather than hiring a kid and putting them in harm's way. Um, but simulation for weather, for things like that, we're able on our DJX supercomputer to do 60,000 miles of testing in one hour or every road in the U.S. in one day. Um, so that's what's needed to validate that these cars are safe. Um, if I could do, you know, every road in the U.S. at all times a day, under different weather conditions, potholes, animals, you know, who, who knows what, without actually putting people in harm's way, but keep that correlated and audited so it matches reality, that's huge, right? That's a tool that not only the car companies want, but the regulatory and government wants too, because the government has yet to solve the problem. How do I certify that a car is safe enough to put on the road? And I think it's going to be a combination of physical testing and simulation testing. Is there anything else that NVIDIA is showing off here at the self-driving center other than those new chips you spoke about? Um, so we have this eight-mile drive that we charge our New Jersey team to use our own product, use the, the development platform we have, and actually go for a drive. And so uh, the video is available on YouTube, but that's one of the things we're showing is that it's a very complicated drive. There's, I think, 30 intersections we pass through, uh, seven or eight hard turns, stop signs where you're waiting for traffic to clear, um, and it did a great job. So uh, other than that, um, you know, this is our booth and we're having fun here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me and maybe I'll get to see you again next year. Sounds good. Thank you. So that wraps it up for my coverage of the NVIDIA booth here at CES 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, definitely leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more cool videos like this one and all my coverage here at CES 2018. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter so you can get first updates on everything. It's at Solid State Tweet. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.